Hey BookTube, this is Friday Reads on Saturday. I'm Jen and I talk about audiobooks and uh, I usually talk about them on Friday for Friday Reads, not on Saturday, but yesterday it was just a little too much to get to it. So let me tell you about the five books that I read last week today on Saturday. I'll start off with A Matter of Days. This is by Amber Kaiser and it is narrated on audio by Alex McKenna. I actually own this in print, but I've put it away. And uh, I got a little ways into it with Alex McKenna. Oh, this is YA uh, post-apocalyptic. Got a little ways into it with Alex McKenna and I just mm, couldn't quite do it. She has a great voice. She has a really raspy voice that it, it's just really, um, it's a little bit like um, Emma Galvin's voice. And I really enjoy that. But for this character, this character was 15, I think. And then she had an 11 year old brother. Well, her 11 year old brother was very mature for his age in the way that he was able to be resourceful and knowledgeable about certain things. But the way that Alex McKenna did his voice sounded like someone trying to like overdo a little kid's voice. And it didn't sound right to me. For one thing, a lot of times it sounded older than what this kid was. So, you know, it started to bother me and it bothered me more and more. So I finally just gave up and went back to the print book. This book is marketed as YA, but I felt like it read more like a middle grade book, uh, probably because of the author's notes at the end, which talk about what might happen in the setting of this book. The setting is that a flu has happened and this young girl who is 15 and her younger brother have been vaccinated by their uncle who is involved with the military and he's a doctor and he knew about it coming and whatever else, I don't know. Um, so they are orphaned and so they now have to make their way from Seattle to West Virginia to go be with their uncle and so it's the story of them doing that and so it was kind of unbelievable and at these authors notes at the end she really does speak to the reader as a very much younger person and the kind of things that happened during the journey were a little bit overblown a little bit unbelievable you know i've read a lot of post-apocalyptic fiction fiction and while this wasn't trivial I think she introduced some elements but didn't take them far enough and probably because of the age group to which the book is marketed. So that was fine. I ended up giving it three stars. I think it's, uh, it's good for what it is and for who it is for. But for me, I, you know, it didn't wow me or I've read better, so. And then I read Nixia Unleashed. This is by Scott Reinken, and it is uh, book two in the Nixia Triad. It's narrated by Sullivan Jones, Alex Ramashov, and Carol Monda. Uh, Carol Monda had maybe a paragraph. Alex Ramashov had a little bit more than that. I mean, he had maybe a chapter. And then Sullivan Jones did the bulk of the narration. Um, he is the main character, the voice of the main character. It's told in first person. And the thing about Sullivan Jones that was so amazing was that this is a very multicultural book. It is, um, uh, the, the premise is that a group of economically depressed teenagers are chosen to be sent to a planet to mine this element called Nixia. And they are promised lots of money. Their parents, their families will all be taken care of and you know, so will they when they get back and yada, yada, yada. So you have all kinds of people from all over the world. And he did all of these accents so well. And then, and then <laughs> you get to the planet in the second book, they're on the planet and the um, indigenous people to the planet also have an accent so he will he really really did that well I don't know that his phrasing was always spot-on but he made up for it just more than made up for it in the way he was able to do the accents so yeah 
excellent narration and I he if he does another book I know I'm gonna love it the book is uh, pretty good it didn't really suffer from middle syndrome middle book syndrome at all um, it spent a lot of time on the planet and uh, gave you a lot of background in terms of the indigenous people to the planet and what um, their relationship is with the corporation that brought the main characters to the planet. Um, there were some twists and turns that I did not see coming, which was nice, and uh, kind of a big cliffhanger ending, which, uh, whew, not the kind where uh, you're dying, but you're getting close to dying to find out what happens in the third book. So great YA sci-fi. Um, I, I really enjoyed it and uh, I gave it four stars. Torn Away is a book that I picked up at Dollar Tree and when I scanned it on Goodreads, it said it had pretty high ratings. It's by Jennifer Brown and it's narrated on audio by Lauren Fortgang. Well, I was surprised that I could get the audio because I didn't, you know, normally a book from Dollar Tree is kind of a B-level book and you don't expect for them to have gotten some wide acclaim or have been hyped very much. But uh, Jennifer Brown apparently is a pretty well-known YA author, although she was new to me. Uh, and Lauren Fortgang, I love Lauren Fortgang's narration. I've listened to several books that she's done and always enjoyed them, always. I don't think there's one book she's done that I haven't enjoyed, so I knew that was gonna be good. And it was, so uh, this book was different than what I thought it was gonna be. The main character's name is Jersey, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, she lives in Missouri and she has kind of a so, so, I mean, she's a typical teenager. So, you know, her mom will say, you need to do the dishes. And she's like, oh, she has a little sister who is 10 years younger because her mother was married to her dad. Her dad left and kind of abandoned she and her mom. And then her mom remarried, had her younger sister. And so, she loves her little sister and does a lot with her, but her little sister can be very annoying because she's just very much of a personality. So there's one day when the uh, sirens go off, you know, as they often do, the tornado sirens. And if you live in the Midwest, you hear it fairly often. And usually they're just being preemptive and, you know, it's in case something happens. And usually nothing does. But in this story, there's an F5 tornado, which is the biggest and the worst, comes plowing through the town where Jersey lives and it takes her house. She is alone in the basement and her sister and her mom are at her little sister's dance class in town. And her um, stepdad is at work. And so her house blows away. And she's in the basement, so she's okay, but uh, she comes upstairs and her house is gone and her mother and her little sister are killed in the tornado. So um, it becomes the story of her finding her place in the world and with family and who family is. And uh, it's hard to read. It's really hard to read because she's abandoned over and over and over again. And uh, it's somewhat of a Cinderella story uh, it ends up good. It, it turns out well. But what I loved was Jennifer Brown was not afraid to go to the place and stay there with this character where she knew she was angry. She knew she felt abandoned. She knew she was uh, upset, but she couldn't get over it. And I loved that. I think as hard as that was to read, it was so authentic. I really appreciated that. And uh, it does have a good ending, like I said. Um, she does uh, come to a place where she's able to accept her circumstances and her circumstances improve. So that's good. But boy, it was hard. It was really hard to read. And there were so many times that I thought, do this thing, just do this thing. But we're talking about a 16 year old girl. And to be honest, you know, when I was 16, I wanted to run away, but I didn't do it because I couldn't figure out the logistics of it. And she's very much the same way. So that kind of echoed for me. So I really liked this book. I gave it four stars. I would uh, probably four and a half would not be too many. 
I, I think it's that good. Uh, YA contemporary and yeah, great narration. Kind of good all the way around. I just finished Hate to Want You, which is book one in the Forbidden Hearts series by Alicia Ray, narrated by Summer Morton and Jeremy York. And uh, the narration was good. Very, uh, I like Summer Morton. I didn't realize that I liked her as well as I do, but I really did. Um, I thought she captured the character really well. And Jeremy York was really good. Um, so narration was good all the way around. Jeremy York has a distinct voice, but he, uh, and, and it's not always appropriate for the character because it might be a little high, um, a little, not, not really strong enough, not have the depth, but you know, he makes up for it in his emotion and phrasing. So, you know, I was totally fine with that. So excellent narration. The story is really interesting. It's about a couple who meet once a year and they get together and that's it. Then they go and they are apart for a year and then they come back together again. And it's usually on her birthday. And this is a couple that uh, was, grew up together and they were great friends and even were involved with each other in high school, but some tragedy happened and their families became estranged. And there's a lot more to it than that. Um, you probably can gather that from the synopsis if you read it, but this is adult contemporary. Um, the protagonists are in their 30s, early 30s, and it's really good. It, it had a lot more depth than I thought it was gonna have, and a, it was a lot more complicated than I thought it would be. And it was really steamy. Uh, it kind of almost edged over the line of too much for me, but you know, it's easy to skip those parts if you don't want to read them. And one of them, I'm glad I didn't skip because it had to do much more with vulnerability and um, trust than it did what was actually happening physically. So sometimes that's a good thing. Uh, so anyway. I ended up giving it uh, three and a half stars. I think I marked it as three on Goodreads, but I'd say it's probably closer to four, to be honest, because it had so many other things going on. And the last book I read was The Summer of Impossible Things by Rowan Coleman. This I was able to get on audio. Um, it's narrated by Imogen Church. And uh, I don't think you can get it here in the US. I got it, the UK version, and it's set in the UK. So, um, wow, Imogen Church is amazing. This woman and the way she embodied this main character was, wow. I haven't heard narration that good in a long time. And I've heard some good narration so this stood head and shoulders above pretty much most of the things that I listen to. So I hope that we can, in the U.S., get a hold of this on audio. Um, yeah. Oh, gosh, it was, it's so good. The story is about a woman who is a physicist, and she is right at 30, and her mother has died. Her mother committed suicide. She's very close to her younger sister. Her younger sister is, I don't know, maybe three years younger. Her younger sister has a problem with addiction. She's, she's trying to get past it. She's been clean for a while and then she kind of fell off the wagon when her, their mother committed suicide and so now she's back on the wagon again. Their mother is from uh, New York and their dad is British, which is why they live in England. So they go back to New York to settle part of their mother's estate. And while they're there, this main character slips back in time to 1977 when her mom was about 20 and some significant things happened in her life. So the 1977 setting was spot on, spot on, no kidding. And I was graduating from high school in 1977 and the only thing that I didn't recognize that I thought was left out of the book was Star Wars came out. But see, that's because I'm a Star Wars fan. And you know, for a physicist, you'd kind of assume that she, she'd be interested a little bit in that. But uh, so it's the story of what comes of that. Really, 
really a good story. It ended so well and I was so afraid it wouldn't. And Rowan Coleman decided to give us an uplifting, you know, good look at uh, what could happen. And so, I, wow, it was so good. I ended up giving it five stars. It brought me to tears a couple of times. It was so good. It was so good. So it was nice to have, you know, a five-star book wow me during the week. That so that was last week. Uh, if you've read any of those books, let me know what you thought of them, and especially The Summer of Impossible Things, because wow. This week, I picked up um, book one in the Avis Crucible series by Mark Goodwin, and that's narrated by Stacy Glimbowski, and it is called Divided We Fall. It is Christian post-apocalyptic fiction and adult, and I'm really interested in this. Uh, it's not really grabbed me over much, but I'm certainly very interested in it. Um, I, I, it's got some definite, definite Christian influence. I mean, it's a Christian book. And um, I'll be interested to see how he changes and grows this main character because she's kind of judgmental and kind of legalistic and kind of looks down her nose at people, a little bit judgmental. So yeah, I'll be interested to see what happens with that. I have to tell you that uh, earlier today, I looked at my husband and I said, why is it people think they're so much more spiritual if they quote King James, like the King James version of the Bible? Like, or they pray like that in that kind of the and now kind of, why is that? Why does that make you closer to God or more holy? And he started laughing, it was so funny. He said, I know, I don't understand that. Like, why can't you just speak to God in your normal voice, in your normal language? Yeah. Anyway, I think God does call us to be authentic. Yeah, just my opinion. Anyway, so I'm listening to that. I'm only about four or five chapters in and yeah. I'm enjoying it so far. Um, I am still working my way through Nantucket Thunder, through Nantucket Blue, and I forget who that's by, but um, I'm reading that in print. Uh, it's not available on audio. And then I have a few other things that I may want to look at this week. And the, one of them is Touched. It's by Sin Balog. This is not on audio. It says trading one future for another. So that tells me time travel. That tells me, you know, YA, kind of some fun. So I don't know what this is rated on Goodreads, but it just looked really interesting to me when I picked it up at, um, at uh, Dollar Tree. And then I have, uh, let's see, which one is these? Uh, two, <laughs> two books, I'm not sure which one is the first one and which one is the second one. Um, Upside Down and Inside Out by Leah Riley. I'm pretty sure these take place in Australia, or at least they have a character who is Australian. So that just sounds good. I think those would be really quick reads, you know, like blow through them really quickly. And the only other one that I may pick up this week is Quantum Coin. This is by E.C. Myers. And McLeod Andrews narrates this on audio, so I'm interested in that. I've been looking at this book for a long time, and then when I saw it at Dollar Tree, I thought, oh, grab that one, grab that one. I can't remember if this is the first or second book, but uh, I think the first book is called Fair Coin, and then Quantum Coin is, I think this is the second book, but yeah, I never know. <laughs> I'm always getting that wrong, so anyway. If you've read any of those books, let me know what you thought of them. And uh, don't forget the live show for the Deadly Divas is going to be on Sunday night at 8 p.m. on Lisa's channel. We're gonna be talking about, I have it right here, The Book of M, and also Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. Uh, this was fantastic. I keep raving about this book. It was so good. I listened to it on audio. It's by Peng Shepard. I listened to it on audio and it's narrated by Emily Wuzeller and James Fui. And it was amazing. Yeah, five stars. So join us for that over on Lisa's channel. God, it always sounds like, it. yeah, it's raining outside. It's the four o'clock rain. So join us over on Lisa's channel for that live show because it's gonna be very animated, I think. There were people that didn't even like that book and then there were people that loved it, like me. So I'll be interested to see how that goes. 
So that's it for now for me. Have a great weekend and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.